Yep. Um, first of all, when a new student comes in, okay. I teach them keyboard arrangement. Mm -hmm. But I don't do it the normal way, because I'm not normal. <laughs> So I ask the students to look at the keyboard and see if they find anything that resembles an Oreo cookie. Huh. And there is one right here. And here. Oh. Because there's two black wafers and some white stuff in the middle, right? Yep. If you find the Oreo cookie, you can find C. Because if you spell cookie, it starts with C, it ends with E, and the good stuff's in the middle. C, D, E. This looks like a serving fork or a pitchfork. And the F starts this, and in any given Saturday at IHOP, the thing you're gonna find at the end of my fork is bacon. <laughs> F, G, A, B, and then I'll have them go C, D, E, C, D, E, C, D, E, and then I'll have them go F, G, A, B, F, G, A, B, and we'll do that a few times. Now, one of the games that I use to help them get really good at identifying the keyboard is this keyboard race game. So we take turns drawing, we draw a key, and I will be at one end, the student will be at the other, and they have to move to the closest A on the keyboard. I would move to G. If I need a short game, I usually put a marker right here on F, which the middle of the piano is really right here but um, I give them the advantage of one note, and we have to cross the F to win. If it's a long, if we have enough time, we have to get to the other side of the keyboard. Kids love this game. It's really super fun, and there's no way to rig the game and win. I have other games where we work on notes and stuff, uh, note flashcards and things, but those are some of the things that I do um, with young students for this, but if you come over here, I am constantly using this tool mm -hmm. to demonstrate notes, yep. rhythms, whatever. I have a rhythm, uh, little uh, rhythm board that I use, not a board, but I have a little plat, uh, what's it called, rhythm plotter that I use and I help students figure out rhythms and how they work together and how to count them. Um, and then again, we'll play some of our games down here. One of the things that we do is we roll a die and we'll see an interval or the distance between two notes and I'll have them pick one note and then put it a fifth away oh. so that they can see a fifth on the keyboard. Then I might have them write a fifth on, this, on the staff. So there's just some of the things that I do. Cool. This is what I call a scale builder. It helps students to know the different, the. Um, formula for building a major scale and it helps them understand intervals as well. Um, this is a chord builder and it um, we use a lot of things to determine chords, altered chords and substitutions. So that's like they're just erasers with numbers on them? Yeah. That's and, neat. And so I use it to demonstrate things. This is another favorite game of my kids. These are called note spellers. Ah. If you know your notes, you can spell the word. There's an A, this is bass club, so this is A, C, E, Ace. Ace. Yep. And this one would be D, A, B, no, it's not it. D, A, B, B, E, D. Dabbed. Dabbed, I love that, trendy. Yeah. Uh, these frog flashcards is actually a matching game. Um, we do have notes, some flash chords of very simple notes, because this is for primary. But it also has symbols. And wow. they okay. put the frog on the lily pad with the matching description. So, and my younger ones do really well with that. And this is just a way to keep music theory off the page and more interactive. And as an elementary school teacher, I learned that anything you can do with your hands or that you can do verbally sticks a little better. Than pencil and paper. I agree, yeah. So, and it also helps little kids who can't sit on a bench that long to get up and move. So, gotcha. And that would be that. Thank you. Mm -hmm.